Today we have an interesting French lock. Uh, this is an Isis, and I'm reading that off the key. Um, probably butchering the pronunciation. Could be Isis for all I know. Is he? Um, in any case, really interesting lock in that uh, you can see the shape of the keyway there. Uh, that part's going to fit in. If I show you the operation of the key, it might make a bit more sense. I have to push this part in, and obviously this part is is what engages these pin the pins through the holes there. But when I put, push that in, you can see that I'm holding the pin stacks where they are, but the uh, end part can turn. So what's happening here is that the key is pushing in the pins at the front, and only the rear part of the key is turning. This front part is stationary. Um, so quite an interesting lock. Now you might look at it and go, chibi lock, five pins that are easily accessible. Um, pretty easy, right? This is actually a red belt lock, and um, uh, what I'm using for tension here is just a bent piece of wire that's going to engage where that um, end of the key would be. Uh, if you're not familiar with the belt system, uh, it's like karate belts, and um, basically black's as hard as it gets, red's just under that. This is a very highly rated lock, and uh, I'll get to picking because uh, it's going to take me a while, and you'll sort of see the, what's going on. I just need to sort of feel and concentrate initially at what's going on here. So what we have are pins that are basically hourglass shaped, heavily spooled, and in some cases have got two spool sections, uh, with a massive taper on the end of the pin. That's both the uh, drivers and the key pins at the shear line both have these tapers, as well as the spooling. Now, what that does is, you'd think it creates a very large shear line that would be easy to uh, define. But what it actually does is uh, causes the pins, to, either the key pins to very easily overset or the drivers to underset effectively. It's... For me to describe, but uh, it probably makes more sense when you see the pins. They take turns binding, so you'll basically unbind a pin and you'll get infinitesimal movement before another pin binds. So it's really just a matter of sequentially unbinding the pins. Until you can finally get them set. There's also some slop in the um, in the holes for the key pins, which once again makes everything just that little bit harder. The tolerances, however, are excellent. The pins all bind pretty much at the same time. Occasion there will be, for example, these two pins. I'm going to call them one and two, and we'll call that five. Uh, they're taking turns binding. Now three's probably bound. Four was bound. Five. Just getting just a micro click. What effectively I'm feeling for here is uh, a bounce. Um, I'll get stiffness. I'll push, get a click, and then it'll be bouncy. Stiff push. And basically, every time I'm touching one of these pins, I'm getting a little click. A nice one out of four after working one and two.
one and two are starting to feel like, uh, well, I can feel the um, key pins bottoming out, which means they're getting close to being set. That's my finger touching this, sorry. They actually feel good. Nice click out of four there. Five. One, two and three are feeling pretty much set. So we'll just ping pong four and five for a while. Ah, there we go. Now we're open. Now obviously this is going to lock up when we get to the next section. Uh, what I will do, uh, at which point the key won't work. Let's just show you the back moving, shall we? So that was straight up and down. Oh, damn it, I've just locked it up. Um, well, in any case, uh, you saw that that was moved. I cannot move it. If I put the key in at this stage, I can move it. So that was picked and you obviously heard those pins drop. Let's just carry on with the gut because uh, we're seven minutes in already and picking it 360 degrees will take a fairly long time. Um, if you do want to see me pick it 360, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, just leave a comment in the um, comment below and if there's enough people who want to see a 360 of a um, Isis lock, then I'll, I'll do it. So once again, there's our key. I'm going to need a little tray for this one because there aren't many pins. These are a mongrel to get out. Um, if you do have to do that, you effectively, I mean, this has been out a number of times, so it's quite easy now, but uh, that is the C-clip that you need to get out to cut it. The one that's on the back here is actually can stay there. So we'll just pull this out of here. And that's the rear core where the springs and drivers sit, but uh, the way that it sort of naturally sits, that will, um, just the springs will sit in there. All of our drivers and key pins are in here. Uh, I'm just going to grab some tweezers. I think it's also important to note at this stage that all the pins are around the right way. I don't know how to sort of really prove that. Um, it's sort of all fat ends up at the moment. Anyway, uh, if I call, what, what's that number one is over here then. Start with five, it's easier to reach. Number five, so that's... spring goes up here. I'll put one spring there just to keep my heads trail up. Five, four, so this is the shear line through here. show you the key pins when they're at shear due to the pins and how the key can sort of operate once it's been pushed in. There's not a lock. I searched actually for videos on this lock because I was having so much trouble picking it before I gutted it. 
Um, I'm using a magnet here to, to pull these out. Um, and I couldn't find any information on it because, um, well, any, any pick and gut videos or sort of information on the pins. So I am trying to make it a bit easier for the next person who wants to have a go at one of these. The feedback because of these pins is just really peculiar. Um, you feel like you should be sort of pushing through the bits of resistance a bit further, you know, am I just under setting everything? Should I, should I push harder? You know, when I was first starting to pick them. Uh, in here we have two ball bearings also. We can see one up there and one down there. So if you remember that's one, that's two and five. So spots two and five have BBs in them. And I'm putting them backwards. I do put them backwards. And that's two, and that's five. So in there we can see. Housing. Try and keep it in frame. And dump the springs out of there. Do we really need to get them all out? Why not? And I guess I can show you that's how the key interfaces. So uh, there'd be the potential to put some pin tumblers in there. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, that's the Isis, Isis, cool French weird lock. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you. See you later.